What's good, everybody? It's Roman Rance. And your girl, Gracie May. And we are joined today by the one and only Mr. Zaza Vibes, the guy who makes girls go crazy, Mr. Loverboy himself, a.k.a. King Rasaki, a.k.a. Man like LAX in the <laughs> building. What's good, what's good, what's good, what's good? I'm good, I'm good. I'm so happy. I'm so happy that I'm doing this interview with my family. You know, hey. we're like, we're like, we're like family, man. Thank you very much. Big, big love for joining us. It's always nice to speak to you. Always nice to catch up. Always nice to, to you know, to, to Lamba. <laughs> Before we start, big congratulations on Zaza Vibes. As I said, absolute vibe, massive project, massive, massive hits in every single song. Like, thank you, thank you, thank you. Done you done your damn thing. You done the thing <laughs> of that album for real, for real. <laughs> thank you, boss. Thank you, boss. In terms of the the concept of the album, I like the transitional vibe. It's, it's like you're almost telling a, it's like a sort of like a love story throughout the album. Mm. Yeah. Was that, was that the intention of the album? Or did you set out to say, cool, this is the story I want to tell, and then you started making the songs? Or was it a case of that's the songs you had and it just happened to fit that story? Um, so um, it was everything I did with the album was intentional. Mm. Even from the name to, um, to the songs. Because obviously, you know now, I'm recording every time and I have so much music. Yeah. But for um, Zaza Vibes, I picked, I wanted it to be very musical and to still explain what I was trying to explain. So about um, women, just praising women. I love that. Now you tweeted just yesterday that Zaza <laughs> Vibes is the album of the <laughs> year. No cap. <laughs> and they wanted, to, they wanted to kill me on Twitter. <laughs> <laughs> me. But they know, they know deep down, better than their fame. <laughs> Jeez! Now I know because you've spoken about this previously, but I feel like our listeners need to hear the very first track that you recorded for this project was perfect with Mr. Easy, and this was a result of a heartbreak. Talk us through all of that. So I don't like to remember this, but it's because it's you, Gracie. I'll just quickly say it. My so, um, so I'm going to a um, situation with my, my girlfriend at the time, and we broke up. So when we broke up, um, I went to, actually, you know how when you're in London, you can book like, you can book like a session online to record yourself. I forgot the name of the studios, but this is like a recording studio that you can just book online. Um, Paris and Paris Studios. Go yeah, Paris Studios. Yeah, yeah, so yeah. So I already booked the studio I already booked a session with Mr. Easy that day to go to the studio already, mm. not knowing that this was going to happen, not knowing that me and my girlfriend are going to break up. So she broke up with me that morning. And I'm like, you know what? I'm still going to go to the studio regardless. So I got to the studio and I just started rec- saying things about, you know, you're not perfect, I'm not perfect, but we can still stay together, thinking that I'm still going to get back with her. <laughs> oh, <God. laughs> so, um, Mr. Easy came that day, killed it. And that day I was not even, I was not even like my best of moods. So mm-hmm. after I recorded it, then the next day I went back to the studio and I listened to it and it sounded amazing. So I'm like, you know what? Why don't I just make an album that actually expresses this? So elongate like the storyline yeah. and just praise women, explain. Because at the end of the day, it was me that messed up the relationship. So I'm trying to, you know, so the album is trying to tell this person that I can still love you. Yeah. So I recorded everything that, you know, has to do with that storyline. I so, love that. And you said that you recorded 50 songs. So how did you get to the final 12 that made the project? Um, so we did like a now session. Me and my team back home in Nigeria sat down, picked songs. Some of the songs that I wanted on it, um, I didn't get to put it on it, but I was very picky with um, perfect because I really wanted that song to because that's the, like the best of the of the album. But I just left it to my team to pick because me, like I'm the one recording, so I'll be very biased with the songs. Yeah. So you know when somebody else from another um, perspective is picking, it's different. Yeah. So I just give them the the free will to you know pick the song. Mm. And does the girl know that the song is about her? I'm sure she'll know now, by now. 
<laughs> if she didn't know before, she definitely knows now. I know, I know. She knows now. Because I'm sure she's the first person to hear the album. Mm. <laughs> Obviously, she'll be checking now. What's this guy doing? <laughs> uh, now, apart from Mr. Easy, you've got a few collabs on the project. You've got Peruzzi, you've got Timmy Boy, who's my fave. I think last time I saw you in Lagos, it was me, yeah. you, Timmy Boy, Malogo. Yeah. Good vibes. You've got um, Omar the DJ, you've got Techno, yeah. you've got Tiwa Savage, and you've got Simi. So talk me us through um, getting those collabs and what it was like working with such a great array of artists. Yeah, so it was it was amazing. Like for me, it's more than the music. It's about the vibes. Like if I vibe with you, then we'll create something. I've not been in the studio with, I can't remember me being in the studio with anybody and we don't create something amazing. Yeah. So for um, me and Tech, went to his um, studio and in like less than two hours, we already had direction for the song. We already finished it. Um, for me and Mr. Easy came in that day. He was rushing, but we still, we still quickly vibed. In like one hour, we finished the song. Um, amazing session. For Simi, I wasn't there when she recorded it, but I sent her the song through email. And the next day, she already sent me her verse. She really liked the song. The song was, the original was already out. So she was already even vibing to the original. For Tiwa as well, the same. Sent her, me and Tiwa already speak um, once, once, here and there. So when I sent her the song, she wanted to um, do it. Went to a studio, recorded. It was a great session as well. Um, for Peruzzi, the, so the Peruzzi won. Um, Commando was Timmy Boy's original song. It was not my song. He already had the song. Then I was in the studio one day. I heard the song. I'm like, bro, I'm sorry. I'm taking this song. <laughs> so, <laughs> so I took the song from him and I told him that, you know what? I'll still leave you like your chorus. So I left his chorus. So the day I was going to, I was coming to London because I came to London recently. Then um, I just thought about Peruzzi would be nice on this song. So I called Peruzzi and I sent him the song. Immediately I landed, Peruzzi had already recorded. So it was like a last wow. minute thing. So when I landed in London, I called him. I'm like, bro, nice one. So I had that one too. And every um, every recording on the album was amazing. Like every session. Um, are there any songs on the al- um, on the, out now on the album that you initially felt like they might not necessarily make it, but your team picked it? Uh, no, no song. I don't feel so. But like, the, the problem that we had was I wanted more song. Yeah. On it. And why the name Zaza Vibes? Yeah, so um, Zaza is like my alter ego. Okay. So I'm normally always just calm and cool and chill. Yeah. So when I'm like with my, my friends, I have like a different side of me where... I can be loud, I can be jumping and just just being me, like just being free because I'm with my people. So um, my friends started calling me Zaza. And from there, like, I just thought about it. Like, I'm creating an album that has to do with, you know, another side of me, which is like the lover voice. Side. So I'd rather just create the album and call it Zaza vibe. Yeah. That's like something I create. Okay. Yeah, because I was going to say, I, I definitely feel like I've, I've I've seen two different sides, maybe even three different sides of you. Obviously, I know the the runaway LAX, and I also yeah. know the LAX who's in London, but nobody knows he's in London because he's <laughs> so low key. I also I've seen That's the, LAX. the runaway LAX. Okay. Runaway. I don't know. I've, I've seen the LAX who I bumped into in a restaurant, and he was just so quiet and calm and humble. Yeah. Like, <laughs> but I've also seen the LAX on stage who goes crazy and shuts it down. Crazy, yeah, yeah. shuts it down. So would you say, when, when do you feel like you're most comfortable? Is it on stage? Is it in the studio? Is it just chilling with your people? To be honest, to be honest, the most comfortable I am is when I'm on stage, bro. Yeah. Like, when I'm on stage, it's like, you know when you've recorded, you've created something, you can now connect to, like, with the fans. Yeah. That's, like, my best moment. And that's when I'm, like, when I'm, and this has been, since when I was very, very young. Like, when I was young, I was always a very quiet person. Like, so quiet, shy. 
Yeah. But every time I'm supposed to do something on the stage, if it's to dance, sing, rap, I just forget every other thing and I make sure I kill it. Yeah. So that's that's been like my nature sense. And that's how I am still. That's that's how I am still. So now a fun fact as well that a lot of our listeners won't know is that you don't sm- smoke and you don't drink. Yeah, yeah, I do. You don't so drink, when you hit the stage, it's just LA. It's just me, my vibes. <laughs> My vibes. <laughs> That's crazy. Now, That's crazy. It is crazy, right? Because usually you'll see someone and you know that they're high off their face and they're buzzing, like they can hear the music because that drug has I, entered. I actually always look high. <laughs> you know, to be honest, my, my, my brother's the same. My brother's the same as well. He always looks high. <laughs> yeah, I always look high. So like you know, nobody believes. You, you know when you come to, when you go to different cities and you're like recording and like you said, you was in London recently, but like I said, when you're here, not everyone knows you. <laughs> is there a reason why you do that? Because I, I mean, I'm curious. Because <laughs> normally when, when, when people travel, you will see them on their social media. You know where they are. But with you, it's like, you never know where you are. <laughs> no, but you know, the thing about it is for London, because I stayed there for like seven, eight years. Yeah. So I just feel like I'm home. Like, oh, you know okay. when, when you get home and you cannot post like, why are you posting that? Yeah, do you understand? <laughs> so when I'm in London, it's like I'm in my house. So what am I telling people? But obviously, if I go to like Santorini, I okay. go to Maldives, I'm going to be posting, bro. Okay. That, like, makes that, sense. that makes sense. <laughs> <laughs> that makes sense. I think Talking my... about homes, though. Congratulations, LAX. We've seen <laughs> the post on your Instagram. Congrats on your brand new place. The house is huge. You've got yeah, Zaza, just, the just, words in your I pool. The for the day. I ah, the for <laughs> <laughs> We're coming to visit, bro. We're coming to visit. Please come through, come through, come through. I think What's now- it like now knowing that you're on the I mean, I feel like you've been on the ladder because we know that you got the money, yo. <laughs> but like, what was it like going through this process? Because I know it could be really stressful. Yeah, it's stressful, man. It's taking all my money. I need to recoup. I need to go back to the studio and drop more albums so I can go <laughs> buy another one. <laughs> you, need, you, you need COVID to go so you can start doing more shows. Yeah, so I can do more shows so I can just buy like three more. But yeah, it was, it was a process. You know, I'm I'm excited. Like it's something I've always wanted to, you know, own my own um, house, so that I don't need to, you know, be thinking about rent yeah. at the end of the day. Yeah. So that's like a relief. But yeah, I'm ex- I feel like it's just the beginning. Like I'm obviously trying to, you know, do more. So. LAX. You know, I say it every time. My favorite track on a project has to be number three, Shade, because <laughs> the song's about me. It. This is the time to tell everyone the song's about me. Trust me, that song is about you. I've given you the rights of that song. <laughs> ah, you know she's not going to stop saying that now. Every time I play that song, she's going to say it. You own that song. Don't worry. Anyways, you can say it. <laughs> you it's it's it on my head it. now. What? <laughs> I'll tweet in it now. Don't worry about that. Now, let's go back to you in 2008, starting out in the music scene. Yeah. Did you feel like 12 years later, this is where you would be, Mr. LAX? Um, to be honest, like, I love the process. Like, everything about my life is the process, is the growth. Like, aside music, like, me as a person, I feel like I'm a, I'm a better person because I'm always trying to, you know, learn how to do things differently, better. So for, like, the music, I like the type of music I'm dropping now. Like, 12 years ago, I wouldn't have imagined that this is the type of music I'll be dropping. But now, like, I'm excited because it's sweet music. Like, and the reason why I even like the music I'm dropping now is you have to understand music to love it. Yeah. Like, I'm not trying to do bass blues type of music. <laughs> like, if you listen to Sempe, it's a song that if you play to the Caribbeans, they don't need to understand what you're saying. Yeah. If, if you play that song to them, like, they understand the music in it, the sounds, the instruments, and they will vibe to it 200 years from now. If you listen That's to Shade nice. to it, like, it's like um, Jamaican type of sound that you can play forever. So I'm not trying to do music for now. I'm trying to do music for forever, like music that you listen yeah. to later and you still know that, oh, this is music, so. 
time. I'm excited. Time like, I'm not even going to even try and change my sound for nobody. Yeah. Like, this is what I want to do. This is what I'm going to do. And I know that people that understand will understand. Like, I'm not, I'm not trying to be the biggest artist in the world, but I'm just trying to, you know, touch lives, like, with my music. Even if it's 10 people, I'm cool. Yeah. No, I hear I love that. Now, you said that, you know, you're not here to do best day music, bass boost music anymore, but 2013, <laughs> you gave us... Music. I just said Oh, bass sorry. Bass boost. <laughs> Let me do four words in your mouth. <laughs> <laughs> but 2013, that's exactly what you did. You gave us Caro. 2014, that's exactly what you did. You gave us Ginger. So what do you say to your fans that were like, bro, you've changed direction. You know, that's the music that we fell in love with. What do you say to those critics? Um, to be honest, like I still have some of those music, like Bomb Bomb on the album is is up tempo. Um, Perry as well is up tempo. But I'm just saying the sound that I've loved to do, like even from time, is sweet music. That's what I like. Like that's what I listen to, and that's what I like to do. And for Caro and Ginger, like obviously Wiz was on it, and that was like the trend at that time. But now I'm man of my own self like i make my decisions on the sound and i'm happy i'm happy about you know choosing the sound i want to put out without restriction now before you would be in humble saying oh if only 10 people listen to it then that's fine (laughs) but right now you're on 890 thousand instagram followers 119 thousand twitter followers 27.7 thousand youtube subscribers you're hitting the globe and you're hitting it hard where do you feel like you feel the most love outside of nigeria outside of nigeria um from my back end because we are using statistics Mm, (laughs) analytics tell me tell me statistics i feel like (laughs) france is where um people are playing my music and i didn't even know so i went i went to france for a show last year mm. so i had like a mini just uh, meet and greet that i was doing and that same day wiz has his, um, had his star boy first yeah so i got to that show and i wasn't even supposed to perform i was just supposed to go and um, greet wiz and just you know vibe so before wiz came out dj2 said you know what let's just do two songs and when i got on stage and they performed run away I was like, oh my God, like people are singing on the word for word. These are white people. And after that, he played Bayfone and that was a madness. So I feel like France, then America as well from my back end. But I feel like everybody's back end as America because of like the population. And London. So London, France, and then America. I was waiting for that London piece. After school in here and living here for seven to eight no, years, no, no. I was no, hoping. That's, my, that's my second, my second. <laughs> that's it. Now, one thing that I will, I will admit, I don't know how I missed this. Your um, partnership with Empire. Yeah. How did that come about, and what does that look like? Is it, is it? Um, what was the purpose for that? Is that so you, you can? reach a wider audience in terms of distribution or what's the idea behind that yeah so um for me like i feel like um for music there's no boundaries Mm. like once you're open to once you're open to grow once you're open to people splitting percentages splitting with you because you know you can't do it alone Mm -hmm. you feel better you a lot of things are lifted off your chest so for empire i just wanted them to come in increase the, um, the diagraphy, increase everything, and just, you know, make sure that, like, the music is heard in different regions. So that's why that's why I signed with them. And I've actually been in talks with Empire for, like, close to, like, two, three years, even before they came to start signing people in Nigeria. Yeah. So it was just a good time, you know, to sign with them. Yeah, because when I saw that, I saw the artwork for, for Zaza Vibes and I saw the Empire logo. I was thinking, wait, when did that happen? <laughs> I must have missed that one. <laughs> yeah, it was supposed to even be on like the logo. Now, LAX, you have come such a long way from paying for your tracks with your pocket money to this mm. point right here. It's been a journey and I feel like we're going to see a little bit more about you on your forthcoming docu-series. What can you tell us about that? 
Yeah, so that's just like the life that people don't really see me, you know, living. So um, it's just going to be vibes, man, like the album. Just me vibing with my friends, me in the studio, me chilling, me doing what I like to do. Just making like people see like, like the inside, like, and I'm going to, you know, continue doing that now. So I'm just going to be, you know, putting out, because I feel like some of my fans love my music, they hear my songs, but they don't even really connect with like my life or my lifestyle. And that's what like a lot of, you know, American artists try to do. Yeah. So, so that you know, you understand. Like this person is not like your friend that you don't see, but yeah. like your best friend. So that's like the type of relationship I want to have with my friends. Yeah. And, and is that dropping this now, year, next year? Yeah, this year. Um, first of all, I'm going to be dropping like series of it before I drop the full one. So on my Instagram, I'm going to be having like two minutes video, three minutes videos before I drop like the full thing. Love to see it. Now, since we're talking about future plans. God willing that Corona dies down and we're all safe to leave the house. What does the next couple months, the next year look like for you, Mr. King so, King? So now I've started working on my album, another one. Huh? But okay. guess what, guess what, <laughs> guess what? <laughs> I'm going to be working with a lot. So this album is going to be like a UK album. Oh. So I'm going to do like um, bringing Afro beats to UK. So I'm going to have like grime artists, big UK names. I'm already working on it. And just have like maybe seven to eight songs. Is there and any name that you can, you can give us? Maybe one name? For now, the producer that I'll be working with a lot will be Lekka Beats. Okay. Um, so I'm going to have Mologo Sneakbo. I'm going to have um, I'm going to have trying to get through to Tio Wayne. Just, you know, just working with a lot of UK, so I'm going to record a lot. I'm going to yeah. even actually come to the UK and be there for like two months. Yeah. Just recording and meeting people, vibing. Then by next year, and I'm even, I'm not even trying to even drop a single next year. Just drop the, the EP straight or the album. Yeah. Damn. And this is the first time I'm saying here. Yes. <laughs> I said it before I remember that I'm not supposed to say it. Because <laughs> it's like, I'm talking to my friend. So you know, even like I can tell you. Uh, uh, so unfortunately, unfortunately, we have come to the end of the interview. As I said, it's always fun talking to you. It's like the time just flies yeah. when we're talking, man. Before we let you go, where can we find you on social media? Social media is I double Z L E X everywhere. Mm. On Instagram, mm. Snapchat, on Twitter is IWZLEX. If you want to come to my house, just DM me. I'll send you the address. Chill. I'm coming. What? Have you seen that swimming pool? I am coming. <laughs> you know, can you can you actually swim, LAX? No, I can't. I was gonna say. Well, I'll just get girls that know how to swim. My guy, my guy, my guy. Come. In that case, I'm coming too because I can't swim as well. <laughs> I'm screaming. <laughs> <laughs> All right, big love, big love. Of course, bro. I'm out here in these streets. Hello. <laughs> See me, I'm, I'm I'm six foot three. I can just stand in the pool. I don't need to swim. <laughs> yeah. All right. Me, I'm fine. <laughs> <laughs> the pool is taller than me, so I have a problem. <laughs> don't worry, I'll help you out. It's okay. <laughs> All right, big love for joining yeah, us today. Thank you, Watch Gracie. It. Thank you so thank much. Thank you, Shadi. Hey, thank you, LAX. <laughs> Again, thanks for the merch. Loving the Zaza Vibes merch. Mine's coming soon. So when mine comes, I'll, I'll start working mine too. <laughs> much love, LAX. Thanks for joining us on the Afro Nation Show.